if you win. And if you want to watch um, online, we're going to have this on twitch.tv slash color circuit live. Um, so it'll be live on there. A quick announcement about Masquerade. We will be meeting in Atrium 3 at 6.30 if you are a contestant in the Masquerade. I know I said 5.30 earlier. It's 6.30. Thank you. So now I'd like to welcome Kira and Xanthi to the stage. Come on, get some applause, get some applause. Couple yous, couple yees, wows. All right, good. All right, so we're going to have a one hour session Q&A. I'll just walk around, just raise your hand if you have a question, and I'll come to you, and I'll give you the mic. If they can't hear you, then of course I'll ask them for you. But I'm not sure if you want to give another introduction in case some people weren't here in the morning. Sure. Just a short introduction. Yeah, yeah. Hi guys, I'm Xanthi Huen. I'm a voice actor from Los Angeles. I mostly do a lot of anime and video games. Anime such as um, Anohana the Flower, we saw that day. Um, Love Live, um, Sword Art Online, Yuki Yuna is a hero, and a couple of other stuff. And um, video games such as um, Hyperdimension Neptunia, Paladins, and, most rec and recently as um, Haru in Persona 5. So. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kira. Some of my credits are to be in Near Automata. Um, I am Evie in Paladin, since we mentioned that. Um, I am Edna in Tales of Zestiria, Umi in Love Live School Idol Project, um, else? Uh, Erica and Katarina in Fire Emblem Heroes, um, Trucy in Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice. Um, Alex in an episode of Miraculous Ladybug, Mehmet in Sailor Moon, um, and it's just like a ton of other stuff. I don't know. <laughs> It'll come up over the course of us talking. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, yeah, this is pretty much going to be a Q&A. If you want to ask us anything, you can go ahead and go for it. It doesn't even have to be about voice acting. You can ask us about, like, you know, music or games or whatever you want. Like, it's just going to be, like, fun, informal, hanging out with you guys for an hour. Yeah, get to know us. <laughs> exactly, guys. It's just a fun, you know, fun session Q and A. Um, any questions doesn't have to be voice specific, but yeah, let's we'll just have some fun. Any questions? Who's the first brave soul? There we go. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, this question is for Kira. Uh, I was wondering, what is your favorite Aerith and non Aerith joke from Final Fantasy Machine? Final Fantasy, Sa sorry. Final Fantasy VII Mission Abridged, uh, season one. Um, I mean, my favorite line that I always mention is the one where she's like, Miggles, 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 and stuff like that. And I don't know, like, there, there's a lot of, like, fun little moments like that. Oh, your friend is a girl, and stuff like that. Dispatching so. Tifa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the next brave soul? There we go. Who are your, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Who are your anime husbandos? Oh my gosh. Um, I was really into uh, Kuroko from Kuroko's basketball. <laughs> he is my husband. I have like way too many little keychains and figurines and things of him, so I'm not going to talk about it. Mine is Diego Brando from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Steel Ball Run. <laughs> Uh, do you have any uh, like voiceover heroes or mentors or people that you really look up to in that field? Yeah, um, definitely. Um, one of the first people I ever worked with was uh, Tony Oliver, and I still work with him a lot. Um, he is a voice actor and director and writer for a lot of the anime and games that you probably play. Um, and um, he really taught me how to relax in the booth because <laughs> the very first day I went in to record for something, I was so nervous that um, he had to stop and he came in and he was like, relax, take your hands off the, the board because I was just like this the whole time. And he was like, no, relax, put your arms down, you know, <laughs> because when you're doing this, it sounds like you're, <laughs> you're like you're taking a crap when you're talking. So, you know, relax, <laughs> be natural. 
And um, even to this day, I still go to him with whenever I have questions about um, anything voiceover related and things like that. So I look to, up to him a lot. Yeah, I'm, I definitely agree with this. And also, Wendy Lee has been a huge inspiration to me. She's directed a lot of the games and other projects that I've worked on. And, you know, she's given me a lot of, like, great direction that really has gotten me to think about the way that I approach things. And we also just end up talking about David Bowie because we're both really big fans. So. <laughs> and can everybody hear Kira? Yeah. Why are In the you back row? On me? <laughs> that was a little soft. That's a little low. Okay, any other questions? Who's the next brave person? Oh, there we go. And then I'll come to you next. Hello. Um, so when you're working on dubbing projects, do you usually look at the original language and sort of try to match that voice? Or do you just more look at the script and think sort of freshly, how can I portray this character without worrying so much about what the original sounds like? A lot of times they do want us to sound close to the originals, especially because it's obviously something that's really important to fans. And so I think a lot of times people make a lot of the casting decisions and stuff, even when they're doing the voice casting, they kind of, um, you know, listen to how the like the tone of the Japanese voices and how we sound. Um, of course, it is ultimately the most about how well you can embody the character and stuff like that. But I do think a lot of times they want to go for something close to the originals. So usually, especially for matching the picture, we get to hear the preview for every line. For games, it really depends. I've worked on games where we do hear the original for each line, and then other games where they said, okay, we don't, you know, maybe have time to do that, or it's, you know, just kind of get with the, like, the general feel of the character. Pretty much that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the times I, I do like to, um, if, if possible, if I know the, what the project is ahead of time, I try to look up on Crunchyroll and watch through it before I go into record so I have a pretty good idea of like the setting and tone of the general show and to really get to know my character before I go in so that I'm not in there trying to figure it out as I'm going, which happens sometimes when they don't let you know ahead of time what it is. And so um, you just kind of have to grow along with the character as you're reading. Um, but like yeah, like Kira said, like a lot of the video games though, um, they just kind of ask you to kind of like set a certain voice, and they're like, okay, that's what we want, just stay there. And so a lot of times, I I don't get to hear what the Japanese sounds like until later on when we have to do matches to timing, because there's certain um, lines where it has to be like a certain um, time, otherwise like it could potentially like cause the game to crash or anything like that so it has to be like certain timing so we'll hear the the Japanese timing and then try to match it or be a little bit um, shorter than what it is in Japanese for when they put it all in so it always makes me nervous if it's something where we weren't hearing reference for every line and then I'm like oh I got really far away from that <laughs> yeah I'm like uh. mm -hmm. yeah I think you were next so this is kind of a silly question, but uh, if you came to this con in a cosplay, who would you be dressed as? Well, I'm I'm already I'm like casual to be. I do have a full to be outfit that you can see on my social media. Um, I also do a lot of like Jolene from JoJo's and oh, but in as like characters that I've played. Well, I played to be and I might do Umi from Love Live tomorrow. We'll see because it's like it's really cold here and the costume is. Not very warm, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. I also have a couple of cosplay too, but I, I didn't bring any because it because of the weather. And a lot of my uh, costumes are more for like summertime. Uh, a lot of like um, school uniforms. Like I have one from like Kion and from Love Live, and um, I have Yuki Yuna, and I have, <laughs> I often bring out my um, noir from like Persona Five and. I think those are the ones that I wear the most. I have a couple other old cosplay that sits in my closet that I can't seem to part away from that I don't wear anymore. <laughs> so I think I have something like 20, 25 costumes that I need to really depart from. <laughs> All right, anybody else? I usually have arguments with my friends on this. Do you prefer subs or dubs? I think it depends on the media and however you want to watch it. You know, it's like there are some dubs that are great. There are some that are, 
you know, maybe not so great or maybe we're just used to the original. So I think however people want to watch their media is like a totally valid option. Um, the only thing that's like not cool is when people come online and like insult us because we worked on the dub of something. So I would say like watch, play things however you want, however you prefer. Just like be respectful about your opinion. Yeah, I like to watch like both and like switch between audio just to kind of see like what the interpretations were like. Um, if I'm not in it, then it's kind of interesting just to watch to see what um, what different studios like and what different how different directors um, like handle projects. But um, I don't know. I'm not really partial to either one. And I have one. What are some of your favorite animes either now or that you've enjoyed in the past? Um, one that first got me into anime, like one of the earlier ones that I liked was Fully Cooly. Um, now, like currently, my favorite is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and has been for like four years. I think you all probably know that if you follow any of my social media. Um, I don't know. I haven't been keeping up with as much these days, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm tr trying to like go through my the list of anime that I've watched over the years. I think my gateway anime was probably Pokemon, like when it yeah. first came out, because um, yeah. before that I did I had I did used to watch like Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon and like all those like um, tsunami cartoons, but I didn't realize that they were anime. I just thought they were cartoons. It wasn't until like Pokemon that I realized like anime was like a certain um, type of animation. And that was kind of like my gateway really into anime, like Roni Kenshin and um, uh, a lot of those card cartoons, Cowboy Bebop. Um, mm -hmm. More recently, I, I really fell in love with uh, One Punch Man. Oh, yeah. Um, That's so I like Tiger and Bunny. I just watched that recently. It's really funny. Um, I watch a lot of Shonen, if you couldn't tell. Um, what else have I watched lately? Uh, uh, sorry, my brain is kaput now, but I, there's so many anime there. They're all really good. I watched a lot of it, too much of it. What about favorite anime that you've been in? Favorite anime that I've been in? I don't know. I love them all. I, I would have to say, like, uh, one of the most fun animes that I've ever worked on was Bloodlad. I really yeah. loved that show, and I wish that it... Um, had more love so that they could make more of it. <laughs> uh, if you had a, a, if you had a nether pie in the sky job, because your job's already pretty amazing, but if you had another job that you could do, what, what would you do? Well, I already do have another job. Um, some nights I work at a kitten nursery as like a kitten caretaker. Um, if I had like a whole career that I would have to do, um, I would own a coffee shop arcade hybrid. I've thought about this at great length. <laughs> I don't know. I think um, um, I would probably work in production for post production for like either at a recording studio or something like that. If I think if I maybe if if voiceover didn't work out, I would still like to work in the industry. So. All right, who's next? What's the hardest voice acting roles you've had? Hmm. Honestly, Umi was kind of difficult just because it was a really, really different character type than I normally play. Like, you know, Umi kind of, you know, she's like more reserved. She's got everything together, almost like the, the big sister type of the group. And, um, you know, normally I, I just like never play like that kind of character. I'm always like the little annoying bratty character. So that was um that was definitely new territory for me. Um, I think um for when I was in uh Nagiyasu, the Lull in the Sea, that um I play uh Miyuna in that and she in the beginning half, like she deals a lot with um with the loss of her mother and then trying to um learn how to, and like kind of like grow up and like learn how to kind of accept um, her new um, like stepmother in a way. I think that was a really fun uh, emotional challenge for me as an actor. Um, and also uh, working on Yuki Yuna, that was like the most um, 
intense uh, sessions that I've had because it was a lot of like, you know, like Dragon Ball Z charge ups, like, ah, and like punch through a wall or punch, do much, multiple punches. And it was a lot of energy. And like, literally, uh, there was one session where we um, went to take a break. I sat down and I almost fell immediately asleep. I didn't realize like how much energy that I had put forth into doing like all the screaming for like the first hour. <laughs> a lot of people but, yeah. don't realize this job does take a lot of stamina. Mm -hmm. I think people think we're just like, you know, like sitting and talking or something. It's like, no, it's a lot of like, and you know, you have to be able to access all these different emotions and stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, next question. Um, this is a question for Kira. Um, so after hearing you saying that you were watching JoJo earlier, um, which part of JoJo would be your favorite and which stand is your favorite? Oh, it is so hard to choose a favorite. I mean, I think maybe like parts four and six are kind of my, but, but I really like all the parts and all the JoJo. So it's like picking a favorite JoJo is really difficult. Um, I think my favorite stand is probably Killer Queen. And scary monsters. I gotta, I gotta give the Husbando stand a mention. Plus, it's named after an album by my favorite musician, so you know. All right. Who else? Oh, spray. Hey. So um, my question is just kind of about whether or not you've had a role that you've auditioned for uh, that you were really bummed that you didn't get. Um, and kind of onto that, like, do you have like a dream role for like any of upcoming like licenses or like you see an anime and you're like, oh, I want to be that character, you know? I think I only heard like half that question. Sure, sure. Could you speak up a little bit? Yeah, definitely. So uh, first part was, do you have a role that you auditioned for that you were really sad that you didn't get and then kind of the second part was that, uh, have you had like a dream project that you wish you could have been in or like a dream character for like any upcoming stuff? Hmm. Well, I, I can tell you I've auditioned for plenty of roles that I wish I got and did not get, but I will not mention what they are. Um, <laughs> as for um, the second part was a dream role that we, a project that we'd like to be in. I someday, I hope, I would love to be part of like the Tekken series because I really love that game. Um, but you know, a lot of them are like international actors, I think, because they speak in like all these different languages, and you know, somehow they all understand each other because it's this perfect <laughs> world. But I would love to be a part of that franchise someday if I could. Um, yeah, as to the first part, I mean, totally. Like, we're auditioning for stuff, you know, sometimes every day, and there are so many roles that it's like, oh, man, I want to get this so bad. But I think it's like one of the, the struggles, I guess, of being an actor is you have to kind of um, not get too attached to anything and sort of come to terms with, even if you think you could do, like, the most amazing audition and, you know, maybe someone else just has, like, a slightly different vocal type and that's what they're looking for. Maybe, um, you know, it's not... It's not like a rejection if you don't get cast. It just means like they wanted to hear somebody else or thought like they were a little closer to what they had in mind. So, you know, there's been plenty of roles that I'm like, oh man, I wanted to book that so bad. But what's kind of cool is when, um, you know, a lot of us know each other and interact and stuff. So when one of your friends gets a role that you really want, it's like even if you don't get it, it's like, oh, well, like I'm happy that, you know, somebody that I know and like got the part. Um, and then as for the second part, my two biggest dream roles are I would want to be um, Jolene Cujo in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean and um, Dizzy in Guilty Gear. I have one. Any, it doesn't have to be a strange warm-up exercise for your voices that you guys do before you actually like start on a roll. Vocal warm-ups? Correct. Um, I have a CD by um, Yuri Lowenthal and Tara Platt. <laughs> Well, it's from it's a CD. It comes with like the book that they have called "How to Be a Voice Actor," um, and I usually do that on the ride over to the studio. <laughs> I mean, I don't really do anything like special. I just kind of like maybe sing along with the radio if I need to. <laughs> All right, who's next? How are you liking Albuquerque so far? 
It's great. Everybody's really nice. The green chili stuff is really good, too, here. <laughs> good food. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was just wondering how you prepare yourself if you have really challenging emotional roles that you have to play and what you tap into personally in order to get into those roles. Believe it or not, a lot of times we don't really get to prepare for our roles because, um, you know, if you're doing like a film or a stage play or something and you have to memorize your lines, you get the scripts in advance, you can kind of like really like think about those choices that you're going to make and kind of, you know, maybe make notes if you need to. But when you're in the booth, everything is cold reading. So it's like you kind of have to be able to access things really, really quickly. And sometimes Mm -hmm. just like kind of if you can think as the character, at least for me anyway, I don't, everybody's got a different process, but I kind of like just try to think about what the character is going through and like, you know, get into their head because I know some people try to like imagine how they themselves would react to it, but the thing is like, the way that I'm going to react to a circumstance is not going to be the way that my character reacts necessarily. So, um, you know, for example, like 9S in your Automata, if he was like, oh, you can call me nines, me, I would be like, of course you precious cinnamon roll. You can have anything you want, nines, because you're adorable. And then, you know, but 2B is like, well, there's spoilery reasons why she's like this, but, um, you know, she's like, well, I, I'm not going to do that. You know, we can't show emotion. We can't. So it's kind of like, I think, thinking like as your character and then just sort of like seeing what they're going through. Like I have questions like, um, who am I talking to? Like, um, where am I? What is my relationship to this character? Um, what am I like thinking about? Cause sometimes you'll be saying something, but thinking something else. So it's like, if you're crying, you don't want it to just be like empty crying. Cause then it's going to sound fake. But if you think about like, Oh, Like, my character, you know, is crying because they're afraid of losing, like, the person they love the most or something. And you're, like, thinking that while you're crying, that emotion is going to come through. I mean, you have to kind of do all this, like, really quick in your head because it's, like, you just get the script and go. But Yeah, a lot of times you really have to um, trust the director and maybe if the producer is there to kind of fill you in what's happening, especially when you're doing um, voiceover for, like, anime because you're constantly just jumping to your character's lines. So maybe you're missing like huge chunks of storyline in the middle that you don't get to see. And so it'll jump to this, sometimes it'll jump to an emotional scene. You're just like, what happened? (laughs) They were happy just a moment ago. And so like, they'll have to like kind of explain to you really quickly what's going on. And then like the, you know, like what's triggering this particular line line that you're saying right now and what kind of reaction you should have to um, what's being said. And, and I'm so, sure you guys know this, but, you know, for anime and games, of course, we're recording our lines by ourselves, you know, with, like, the, you know, the director and clients there and stuff, but we're not recording with the other actors in the cast. So, say, for example, Xanthi and I are in a scene together, and we have a really emotional scene where our characters are talking to each other. We're not going to be in the booth together. We can't react off each other. If she goes in after me, I don't get to hear what she did. So, you know, again, that's also really where the director comes in, makes things sound, like, coherent, makes it sound like we're actually talking to each other. Mm-hmm. But very, that's another challenge. Yeah, very rarely will you get to hear the other thing that you're working off of. Sometimes, like, if there's time, they'll play a little bit and just so you can kind of, like, get the ball rolling. But a lot of times it's just kind of manufactured from within. <laughs> All right, who else? Hi, it's me again. Um, I was wondering, when you're in the booth, is there any space at all for ad-libbing? Or if, because of the timed nature of dubbing, do you have to be like really specifically word for word what the script says? Generally, very specifically um, word for word. The times when things change, it's usually like the director that will just add or delete a word or maybe like, he'll be like, oh, I, I don't think the, the way that this... Um, word is is something the character would say or whatever so maybe they'll replace that word just there or whatever but things are like really timed out according to the time codes so mm-hmm. you know there's not really room to do anything else again sometimes if you're doing it and they won't fit maybe you know they'll just like add or replace a word or sometimes for example if my character speaks very informally and the script says like going to I'll be like oh can I say gonna or something instead but um 
yeah, generally it's very like particular and you know, even for things like games, if you don't have the timing restriction, a lot of times for things done in another language, the clients are, um, you know, the script has to go through like several layers of approval and stuff like that. So they really don't want us to like change things other than what's written. You know, sometimes people will just like make up something for fun, but that probably won't go in the product. Yeah, usually ad libbing is um, only used when you're doing like big crowd walla scenes, and that gets like really, really mixed in into the background. Um, I, but yeah, most of the time, if it's if you have an ad lib, it's just for like an outtake. But yeah. <laughs> Or once in a while, you know, they'll have like a whole stretch of time where, say, two characters are fighting like way in the background, so you can't hear what they're saying. And sometimes they won't have the translation for that, so they'll be like, okay, you know, for like these 10 seconds, just kind of like ad lib something in character. But that's not super common. I'm glad it's not common because I'm terrible at improv, but <laughs> so <am I>. some <laughs> people like it. <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, who else? Question. Okay. And how about any tips for any aspiring um, voice actors? Get acting training. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it helped me um, get, get and get a mic and practice. You gotta get used to like knowing what you sound like, what you're best at, and like maybe find things to work on and like really find your niche. I, I'd say, especially for anime, there's like so many different types of tropes that you can play and like find out what your trope is like or what you're best at. And really play around and audition for stuff. Um, If you guys are interested, because, I mean, I totally started online as a hobby for, like, many, many years. Um, There's a site that I admin called Voice Acting Club. It's voiceactingclub.com. And a lot of people just kind of, like, post auditions for, like, you know, online projects. We get indie game auditions there and stuff now. Some of them even pay and stuff like that, you know. But don't be afraid to, again, just, like, do stuff for fun when you're starting out. You know, do comic dubs with your friends, like, that kind of stuff. So that you can really get, like, comfortable recording and stuff and then you know as to like the classes we talked about even if you don't want to like do you you know you only want to do voice because like I was that person I knew I only wanted to do voice um taking even like a theater class can be really helpful because I think a lot of people who want to be specifically voice actors and I've been there as well fall into this trap of like oh we want to do a lot of different voices we want to do voices and you're not thinking about the acting as much, but the acting has to be the core of everything you do, you know, that's why it's called voice acting, so especially if you're, like, here in New Mexico where I can't imagine there's, like, voice-specific classes, um, any kind of, like, theater, you know, even if it's, like, an on-camera class, anything that's just, like, acting method and acting training will help you a lot as a voice actor. My third question kind of ties into the last two questions uh, that people asked, not that I asked. Uh, Do you think that voice acting is harder than, say, film acting or theater acting? In some ways, uh, mainly because um, I would say it's because you don't get to see the script ahead of time, so you don't really get to, like, have a lot of time to think about in depth uh, what your character and, and, like, all your motivations and things like that. You just kind of have to um, take whatever's thrown at you and be like, okay, I accept this and I will do it as if I am in space, like, flailing about or something, you know? I think it's just a different skill set. I mean, on one hand, we don't have to memorize lines. Mm -hmm. Um, We don't have to physically look like the characters we play. So, you know, I can play like little boys and something and, you know, this and that. Like, we can play like a big range of character types as opposed to what specifically fits our look. Um, You know, I don't know how film actors do it. My roommate is like, you know, film and TV actor. And I'm like, I don't know how to act with my body. What do I do? I'm super awkward. So I couldn't do what a film actor does. And likewise, you know, there are film actors who come in to do voiceover and they don't know how to, you know, translate that emotion to just their voices. Um, But there are there are definitely a lot of people who cross over and do both. All right. Who's next? Come on, guys, don't be shy. There we go. Do you both have, like, favorite movies? Favorite movies? Um, mine is Labyrinth. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite movies is Hugo. I really love that show, that movie, and book. It's really good too. 
All right, who else? Okay, this has nothing to do with voice acting, but what's your favorite food? Favorite food? Um, 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 <laughs> sushi burritos. <laughs> uh, I could probably eat pho every day. <laughs> There's almost nothing that I wouldn't eat, though. <laughs> we had ramen for lunch. <laughs> and the place we went to was little, literally called Naruto, and they, like, yeah. they had pictures of the anime on the wall and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have a really cool hat. Sorry to point you out. Do you want a JoJo ribbon? By the no. way, we do have ribbons. Mm -hmm. Sorry to like totally put you on the spot here, but can you give me your best JoJo pose for the ribbon? Yes. Nice. <laughs> yada yada does it. <laughs> <laughs> so if any of you want ribbons from Kira, be sure to find her and give her your best JoJo pose. <laughs> now what about for your ribbon? Because so, we each have them. I have critical uh, ribbons from Persona 5. So if you come and give me your best Persona call out, I will give you a ribbon. So, so for Xanthi, you call out your Persona. For me, you call out your stand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who else? Come on. Come on. Easy question. Hard question. Medium difficulty. You got one? Um, back to voice acting tips. Um, in high school, I used to have a lot of troubles with, like, Sorry, can you school. speak up? I'm, I'm sorry. Um, in high school, I used to have a lot of troubles with um, screaming. Is there any tips you have to learn how to improve that? Be sure to uh, really practice um, using your diaphragm to um, support it. Make sure you're, you're, you're like supporting your air from down here and not screaming through here because you will easily damage your throat and blow it out like after a couple of seconds. Um, so um, really make sure that you, um, you know, like stand firm, take a deep breath, and then like make sure that you're actively thinking about it because if you're, you know, it's, it's, it's something that you really have to train up to and like something that I learned that I had to do because otherwise I was just always like, ah! You know, from all your throat and just yeah, like, it should not be from up really here. Everything should be you. very open. <laughs> Even if you're doing like kind of this like gravelly guttural scream, and I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it will like help you more if you're not like restricting anything. Um, if you have any chance to take singing lessons, or if you have taken singing lessons, it's a lot of like the same principles. You know, when you're like singing and you're like, you know, having your breast support and stuff, that same principle applies to screaming, yelling, um, loud projected voices. So I think it's, um, that's a really good way to learn, too. So what I learned from doing um, this, the, the yells from uh, Yuki Yuna is, like, I learned that if it's something that's kind of, like, drawn out, to kind of think of it as a scale. So you're doing a scale up, like, ah! So it's, like, if you think of it that way, it's a lot less stress on your throat. But make sure to always warm up properly before you do any extensive yelling and also to warm down your voice which a lot of people don't do so that your your vocal cords can like relax back down i've never heard of that that's something really? new yeah no it's what so are important. you supposed to do for that well there's like um it's like really low-key stuff like just like humming like um don't do you don't have to do like do scales or anything just kind of hum at your like normal tone or also um having like a cup like that where you have like a straw and just kind of blowing air into it so it kind of like relaxes your cords. Huh. I have heard of the like humming after screaming because I've done some really like, um, you know, I think for Smite and Paladins, which I had a blast working on, but it is hard because in that type of game, if any of you guys have played those games, everything's called out, you know. If you're doing an anime or even like a JRPG, they, they try to save your yelling stuff till the end, like any really big loud screams or efforts because, um, you know, that way you're not losing your voice at the beginning of the session. But, you know, sometimes you'll do a game. Um, God Eater was like that too, God Eater 1 and 2, where everything is called out, everything is loud, yelly, and... You know, there's just no way around that. So, and um, drink a lot of tea if you have a session like that. Um, I think having like hot tea is really helpful. Yeah, and also like the the syrup that all the voice actor actors talk about. It's like this like Chinese like herbal like syrup 
tea kind of thing. It's called like Nimjon Pape Kwa. <laughs> but um, they also like sell it in like the little candies now. So like the little throat drops, those are much more convenient than like carrying around a bottle of like syrup. I've but, seen people but, carry around the bottle. It's I've so seen funny. that too. But I mean, it, it actually works really well. And, it does. And if you just have a sore throat in general, that stuff's great. Yeah, but definitely protect your vocal cords, guys. You know, when I get a vocal cord hemorrhage like Jordan Sparks from American Idol did. It's bad. All right, who else? Oh, sometimes it means being like, feeling like a grumpy old person when you go out with your friends because like you want to go to a concert or something and you, you can't like be screaming and stuff. Like if you, if you go to like a bar or something and you have to talk over the crowd really loud, just try to be like careful about doing stuff like that because it is hard on your voice. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, one more time, just to uh, give that website that you were talking about, that you admin, a little more shine. What was the name of it again? It's voiceactingclub.com, or you can always search Voice Acting Club if you forget for whatever reason, or the VAC, we call it for short. And, um, you know, just make sure you sign up, read the rules. Um, you know, we have sections for, like, we have two sections for casting calls, and those are divided. So we have paid casting calls and unpaid casting calls. And... Um, there's like games, visual projects, and audio projects. Um, there's no like, one of like my philosophies for this site is um, I noticed a lot of people were like launching things like this and charging subscription fees or membership fees to join. And I'm really much like, um, oh, this should be like an open resource for everyone. So we have like guides and tutorials and all that stuff. And all that is free and open. And you don't have to, you don't even have to sign up to access anything necessarily. So. I don't know, I just kind of wanted like an open community where people of all levels could come and there wasn't any sort of like paywall or, or barrier, I guess, to getting in. Any others? Um, have you ever seen David Bowie perform live and when and where? Oh, I wish. Oh, um, he actually did his last live show in like 2004 and that was sadly before I became a fan of him. Um, it's funny, I'm really into like 70s and 80s rock and stuff and that's like my whole, I got a lot of my musical taste from JoJo's to be honest, but um, I didn't get to grow up listening to classic rock like a lot of people, so I got into him like, like hardcore got into him only a few years ago unfortunately. I really wish that I had more, um, you know, that I had the opportunity to see him live or that I was listening to him my whole life because he's so fantastic. He was really hot too, not gonna lie. <laughs> Any others? Fourth time. <laughs> uh, speaking of music, what's your favorite anime openings? Hmm. Great Days from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Diamond is Unbreakable. I feel like I'm answering every question with JoJo, but the passion is real. Hmm. I think one of the most memorable openings for me would be Sakura Kiss from Oran. Um, I love that song. <laughs> I feel like it's a it's a running meme now. Like you always go to a con and somebody's like, kiss, kiss, fall in love. I know, <laughs> but it's such a great song. Very well known too. <laughs> Any other guys? What are your favorite lines from any of the things that you've done in the past? And mm. you don't have to do this, but would you do them? Well, if what? Would, would you do those lines for us, <laughs> if you don't mind? Uh, I have to think for a second. I had a really, I had such a blast with the character Evie from Paladins. Like, it makes me sad that not more people have played it because it's like, that character was just so much fun to record and to just be like super crazy and over the top. And I had one line as her that goes, I just want to live a quiet life without blowing everything up. <laughs> Um, I think a line that I really love and um, that a lot of people have also like quoted to me a lot is from uh, Persona 5. And um, I don't know if I should say, eh. it's kind of a, it's a minor spoiler if anybody has not finished <laughs> Persona 5, if you guys don't mind. It's not a huge spoiler, but uh, Haru has this line. So just, just cover your ears if yeah. you don't hear this. <laughs> but, um, but she... Um, on Valentine's Day, if you um, make her angry, she comes by with her chocolates and she says, 
please take my chocolates before I crush them. <laughs> Any other questions? I don't know if that was a question. <laughs> She's a huge fan of Kion, and she wants to know if she can, I don't know, say something, but I guess, um, Yui's line? I'm sorry? Yui from Kion, can you say something in her voice? Oh, we from Kion. Mm. I can't remember any direct quotes, but like, you know. Well, you know, all I can say is that uh, I, I really love Big Sis, and like she's she really works hard um, to learn her guitar, and uh, I really support her in everything that she does. <laughs> Any hobbies or extracurricular activities that you both like to do, like on the weekends or whenever you're free? Hmm. I. Uh do tend to go to uh, this big arcade called Round One, and I supply a lot of Pump It Up and DDR. If I'm not doing that, then uh, every now and then, then I'm working on a cosplay. I think those are like my major hobbies. I don't have a lot of free time these days, unfortunately, um, but I do like, I really like makeup. I think that's like one of my big hobbies. Um, try to, I guess, like get better at sewing when I have the chance, um, playing fighting games, taking care of lots and lots of cats, and I don't know, just like <laughs> watching Netflix or whatever, and going to the coffee shop and drinking lots of coffee. <laughs> All right, who's next? Come on, come on. Oh, there we go. You said you play fighting games. Which fighting games? Um, I used to play like competitively, um, like Guilty Gear and Street Fighter, and um, for fun, I played like King of Fighters. Um, Capcom versus SNK, Melty Blood, Under Night. Um, I like, I guess, like um, kind of 2D fighters mostly. Uh, so I would say Guilty Gear is my favorite of all time. And then of course I, I actually picked up um, Dead or Alive Five Last Round because I play Honoka in that game, and I was so excited that I was finally a playable character in a fighting game. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Who else? Who else? Oh, I see a hand back here. Oh, there we go. Sorry for you guys. I said it's hard to hear me, but the way I think I'm like losing my voice, and I have no idea why. No. Um, when you voiced uh, for the game near, uh, did you ever actually get to meet Yoko? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you speak up a little bit? Sorry, I, I have something covering my mouth, so that's kind of why. I wonder if it's that makeup that he's got on that makes it Have you ever met your character? Um, or it's so noisy here, yeah. yeah. Oh, so he's talking about when you were doing the voice for the, for the game. Um, have you ever met the creator? Met the creator, oh, I wish. I wish. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people asked if I got to meet Yoko Taro when I worked on Nier Automata, and that would have been incredible, but that's not normally a thing that happens. Um, we did have a couple of amazing guys from the localization team who were there to kind of like supervise everything. And, you know, it was interesting because for the longest time I was like, oh, he probably hasn't even like heard the English voices, you know, because it's probably one of those things where it's like, you know, they're focused on what's going on in Japan and then they hand it off to, you know, be done in different languages and kind of like whatever. But then one day, just out of the blue, he tweeted at me and said, thank you for your cool voice. I, I remember the tweet exactly because Senpai noticed me. Thank you for your cool voice voice with a smiley face and I like screamed and threw my phone across the room I was so excited <laughs> yeah no yeah same here I have not um, been able to meet anybody 
that you know directly worked on um, the projects that I've been on. Usually, it's only through the the localization team that's here um, stateside. But um, I have been also tweeted by uh, the creators for um, for Yuki Yuna because uh, they had some. I think they had uh, the musical composer at AX one year, and I went and so I took a picture with him and tweeted it out, and so they responded back to in in the best English that they could, to just like um, that they were happy that we were working on the English version of um, Yuki Yuna. So that really warmed my heart that they cared about us. Mm-hmm. All right, any others? Have you received any bad direction while voice acting? <laughs> totally. <laughs> More like funny direction. Sometimes you're just like, okay, you know, like I will do what I can and see what happens. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think the funniest direction that I got um, was um, I was working on Blood Lad, and uh, the director wanted me to put like a vocal break in my voice when I was saying something, and he was like, and he said, oh, make it sound like you're. Your um, your voice is breaking like you're going through puberty, or as I like to call it, a pubic break. And I thought it was like hilarious, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, I was able to deliver, I guess. <laughs> I think the hardest thing to interpret is when you get direction that's kind of conflicting. Like sometimes I've been told, like, um, can you make it like softer and more intimate, but we need you to project more and like how those those are like completely conflicting things so it's very difficult or you know that um can you like make it sound less rushed but um go faster like things like that cuz it's like <laughs> you know and sometimes like you just got to do your best to roll with it so sometimes if i'm just like really confused on a direction i'll either ask for clarification or say you know or i'll just try something different than what i did and see if that cuz sometimes i feel like they know they want to hear something different, but don't always know like exactly how to articulate that. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'll just give them something else, and then you know, sometimes we'll be like, "Oh, well, I know, I want you to like um, finalize it more or something like that." Mm-hmm. And it's interesting, like the kind of um, detailed instructions you get when you're working for dubs in particular, because we have to match the the timing of the mouth flaps. So sometimes they'll be like, "Okay, we need the first three words a little bit." quicker and then slow this part down and then we need you to stretch this word out so it'll all fit into the mouth t- in that time frame and it's only like you know six letters I mean six words in the sentence you're just like okay <laughs> you know, and then you just go for it yeah but, it's a very very technical skill I mean you know I see comments from like dub haters online of course who are like well anybody could do that and I would love I would absolutely love to just throw them in the booth and like you know, put them in that situation and see, okay, this is really hard. Because, you know, I used to be one of those people who's like, I could totally do this and on and on. And then when I worked on my first ADR sessions, it was hard, you know? There's a lot to think about. You're trying to look at two things at once. You're looking at the screen and the script at the same time. And then you're trying to, like, act on top of all that. And, you know, there's and, – and make your lines, like, technically perfect. So there's a lot to think about. Mm-hmm. All right. Who else? Uh, just cut here in front of the camera. So, would you guys be willing to like voice act two characters? I'm sorry, could you say it again? Would you guys be willing to voice act two characters real quick? Sure. What, like in characters? the same um, project you mean? Or? No, just separate do you, projects. Do you have particular characters you wanted us to do? You for Sachi uh-huh. and Black Lotus for Kiri. Sorry. Black Lotus. Okay. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Kirita. Um, let's see. So, you really think you can advance in the accelerated world? <laughs> All right, who else? Okay, so when you guys are doing the ADR process, how long does that usually take uh, per day? And how, how long does s- what? Sorry? Uh, the ADR. Uh-huh. Um, how many scenes do you do per day and how long does it take? 
That really depends on how much your character talks. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if they don't talk that much, you can go through multiple scenes, like we just skip and continue on, or um, or if they talk a lot, then it could take a long time to finish uh, an episode. So there's no real way to gauge how much you would be working. A lot of times they uh, like try to, you know, book you for like a two to four hour session at a time, depending. Yeah, and it, it just really depends, you know. So if you're going in, again, you know, the minimum is two hours. So normally you're booked for at least two hours. Sometimes you finish before that and, you know, it's, it's just a matter of, like, you still get paid for the two hours even if you finish early. But then, you know, you'll be working on some things where maybe you'll have, like, a four-hour session and you'll only get one episode done because your character is really, really, like, dialogue intensive. Or maybe, um, you know, some directors like to do a lot of takes and kind of explore all different options and, you know, or they have, like, a really particular read they want to hear. So sometimes, you know, you'll be spending a lot more time on one episode. And then I've also worked on things where it's like a whole series and we just like flew through it. All right. Who's next? Yeah, we're almost out of time. Any other questions? Bring them on. All right. Hey, I understand you're more professional uh, voice actresses, but uh, right off the bat, I'm an animator. I've told you that. So would you just even have interest in voicing any online animations? Yeah. Yeah, um, I think a lot of it depends on like the time commitment that would be involved in mm -hmm. this and that. I do a ton of stuff from home. I do have a professional recording booth from my home as of a few months ago. It was very expensive, but super glad I got it. Um, I mean, I know usually now I'm, I'm pretty much like I have to get paid for my work. I mean, it's, it's definitely like we have like special rates for like indie projects and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But just a matter of like I am so busy these days that it's like really hard to make time for things. So I do have to charge for, you know, most of the stuff that mm -hmm. I do. What she said. <laughs> I know somebody was asking me, um, when are you going to have your actual sessions? Um, for pictures and signings. Oh, we have autographs right after this in that room right over there. Yep. And also tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Where are they going to be? Oh. So they just let me know. It's actually going to be in the info desk area over here back uh, past the board games. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, we're being moved that way or? Yeah. It's changed around like three times, okay. so we're a little bit confused, but... As long as everybody here knows where to go, then That's we're good. Right. So yeah, we'll lead everyone to info desk. Whoever wants autographs, just uh, follow with uh, the guests. We okay. will also um, have prints available for sale. Um, of course, if you wanna, if you have your own merchandise that you want us to bring and sign, we will sign that for free. Um, otherwise, mm -hmm. I mean, I have like character cards for sale, and I believe Zandy has some beautiful cosplay prints. So I think we have time for one more question. Who wants to ask the last question? Make it a good one. Better be the best one I've ever no heard. No pressure. Um, how do you feel when you hear your voice through a video game? How do we feel when we hear our voice in a game? You know, in the beginning, it was really weird because it's like, oh, that's my voice. Ah. But <laughs> you, you kind of get over that after a while. You get used to hearing yourself and like... I think I'm a l maybe because I know that it's me, I'm a little bit more critical. Absolutely. So, I don't know. I mean, I still think it, it's very exciting when a project comes out, but at the same time, I'm just like, how is it going to be received? I don't want to, ah, are people going to like it? Is it going to tank? Is nobody going to ever, ever hear about it? I don't know. I imagine after, like you said, you were over 100 hours into Persona, I'd imagine you got pretty used to hearing yourself at that point. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, likewise for Nier. But I know, like, I had certain lines in Nier where, you know, again, I was very critical of myself. And I was like, I sound horrible. And, like, I feel like this doesn't fit. And I did a terrible job. And I, I would complain to my friend Kyle, who plays 9S, because we would, like, hang out a lot and do, like, live streams after the games came out. And I was like, I did so horrible there. And he'd be like, what are you talking about? I did horrible on my line here. And I was like, what are you talking about? You sound great. So I think, you know, we are, like, some of our own worst critics. But it is really, really cool. Like, um, I think, you know, my biggest dream was to, like, be able to play as myself in a fighting game. Like, to be able to, you know, because that's kind of, like, what I play and stuff. So I was really excited when Dead or Alive last round came out and I got to, like, play as Honoka. All right, let's give them a round of applause, folks.
And then again, we're going to go, so if you want to go to the info area over there, uh, we'll have the signings and everything. Thank you.